Yes. So, hello everyone. Uh, warm good evening to all here. My name is Abhinav Arvind. I am currently working as a BMS algorithm development and also battery development engineer at Decibels Lab. I have been part of Decibels Lab since 2021 and currently I'm working on uh, mostly on the cell testing and characterization, uh, the model development that is to say digital twin development of a lithium ion cell and even on the battery pack level. And currently I'm also working on model simulation and model validation along with uh, building up like many algorithms for the BMS as well. So in today's webinar, uh, today's session, we'll be like trying to go through uh, equivalent circuit modeling of a lithium ion cell of an individual cell, right? So like what are the different approaches and what are the different methods uh, in which like uh, you can go for modeling of a cell? Uh, what are the different methods and techniques? What are some of the expected outcomes you can get from that? And like uh, some of the comparisons between the different techniques, okay? So uh, this uh, session will be like, a, it will be like somewhat of an overview. We won't be going too far in depth into understanding how each and every model is built and uh, how like uh, it can be taken further and how improvements can be made. Uh, we won't be going too far in depth. So this is just a good, a brief overview. Uh, it's only for like the listeners understanding of how modeling approaches are there in today's standards. Okay. So let's have a quick overview of today's uh, contents. What all will be conducted or what all will be like discussed in today's uh, uh, session. So uh, first we'll start with understanding like uh, what is the different cell behaviors, like uh, whether it is linear or nonlinear. And then we will try to understand uh, the linearity or non-linearity behavior with respect to some graphs. Okay, so we'll see some graphical representation here. And we, after that, subsequently, we'll try to like arrive at some conclusions uh, regarding why modeling is, is required. So what is the importance of modeling? So why we go for modeling? Then we'll try to understand how in realistic uh, in, in realistic scenarios, uh, like how behavior prediction can be done of a, of a cell, right? And some of the limitations as well. So then we'll go for uh, understanding the equivalent circuit based modeling, right? So in that, uh, we'll be discussing three types of models. So one is called as the internal resistance model. The other one is called as the RC model. So RC model is further divided into two parts. So one is called as one RC and the other one is called as two RC model. So we'll have a look into all this. We'll see the circuit diagrams, the, the equivalent electrical circuit diagrams, and we'll see some analogies as well. So like uh, how exactly we can represent the cell as a model, as an electrical model. Then we'll see after discussing all these three, we will also see some simulation results. So we'll have a clear picture of how the model behaves, like how close it is to realistic scenarios. Can it be used or how much to what extent can it be used? All that we'll be able to see here. Then we'll have some uh, comparisons between all the three models by comparing the like features. Then we'll also have a very quick overview of electrochemical modeling. So this is also one way, right? So this is not the main focus, however. So again, as I said, we will not be going in depth into this. So basically we will be like purely looking to the elect, uh, equivalent circuit side, but just for your introduction, we'll go into electrochemical side. Then we'll have a final comparison uh, between the equivalent circuit and a electrochemical model and then we'll conclude the session here okay so this is our content for today right so uh when we go for cell behavior when we try to understand the cell behavior there are like basically two ways in which we can do this right so one is by having a very simplified approach where we are having a very uh, simple uh, simple approach a very linear behavior uh, sort of approach where we are only defining a very basic uh, sort of behavior of the cell. And you can uh, very easily represent this behavior using a very straight line equation or a linear equation. You may have like, you know, uh, y is equal to mx plus b, right? This is a simple straight line equation. So if you just uh, represent the entire cell behavior using some two constants and represent, it in, uh, represent this in terms of the x variable, uh, then you have a very simplistic approach, right? But uh, is it correct to say that uh, batteries or cells uh, will always give you linear behavior? No, not necessarily. So 
in that case uh, while linear behavior gives you a very like sort of very basic understanding it won't give you a very like uh, it won't predict a good behavior of the system in terms of dynamic scenarios right so especially where uh, you're having highly fluctuating voltages or highly fluctuating loads from the motor uh, or from the or from the throttle demand you will not be able to understand uh, using this kind of simple linear linear or simplistic approach uh, how like uh, the cell models will behave in that case so in that case we have to also go for non linear systems okay non linear behavior so how this non linear behavior can be approached uh, we have to go this is where we have to go for now modeling the cell okay so this is why modeling is important so we go uh, we go for non linear behavior modeling by using uh, some simple uh, circuit diagrams and circuit equations uh, which we will see later on in the in this session so using these sort of relationships and uh, you know mathematical derivatives we will be able to understand uh, the dynamics of the cell the dynamics of the battery and in real life uh, situations uh, like how in dynamic situations or in complex situations where there is like a a uh, good amount of discontinuity in the in in the in the in the behavior or if there is some nonlinear slopes all that can be analyzed using the nonlinear approach right so that's the simple like sort of understanding uh, while it is simple to use linear not always it will be suffice not always it will be useful so here is a good example when you compare the voltage graphs okay so this is what is called as a ocv graph ocv or open circuit voltage so you can see the comparison between the two so on the first side that is on the left side you will see that there is a simple linear curve or a linear slope uh, that as i described earlier it is nothing but y is equal to mx plus b okay so the open circuit voltage of the cell can be simplified to a linear graph and for a very simple sort of direct approach uh, of the cell uh you can use this kind of a of a relationship right but in, in reality you can see on the right hand side that uh, a linearistic approach will not give you or will not fetch you useful results right especially when you want to study uh what what kind of behavior is the cell representing in this scenario uh in lower states of charges like below 20% or below 10% uh when you are going to that low state of charge how is it going to affect the Uh, cell that cannot be studied here, right? So this dynamics is missing here on the linear side. So this is one perfect example of uh, why we need to use uh, like sort of a more uh, non-linearistic approach, right? So this is one way uh, in which you can understand it. And the other way is like further detailed uh, graphs you can see here, where uh, how the non-linearity keeps changing with respect to current and temperature. So you can see here. the uh, there is no constant uh, sort of pattern you can see that every time uh, for different situations you have different voltage outputs and different voltage curves so here uh, by looking at all these graphs and all, all these outcomes uh, from all these like uh, uh, all these test results uh, you will be you are able, you will be able to come at a conclusion that uh, uh, you need to have a very good understanding of how the cell behaves and why modeling is very important is because in order to study in depth behavior of the cell uh, in depth dynamics of the cell you need to have a highly sort of non linear and complex model okay so that is why that is what gives rise to the requirement of modeling right so it's not just temperature or charge or discharge current but you can see here over the full effect of uh, like the different situations the different scenarios the cell could face or and or the entire battery could face so here like cycle count uh, variation in other atmospheric conditions like humidity or pressure uh, physical abuse in terms of impact and vibration uh, in the internal uh, systems the internal part the internal components like for example the electrolyte electrode life uh, degradation of all these parts uh, formation of solid electrolyte interface right uh, even like there are things like unwanted reactions which are nothing but parasitic reactions parasitic reactions are uh, unwanted reactions or basically like uh, uh, destructive reactions that happen inside the cell and they can go on continuously consuming the 
uh, internal materials and uh, like eventually it will lead to like total loss uh, of the cell properties and it can damage it right so you have to like uh, go for in depth analysis so all these situations on all these like uh, conditions must be considered right so that is when we have a good understanding of how the cell can behave right so for these kind of situations we have very like uh, advanced models uh, which uh, cannot be covered in one single session but uh, however like these are like very important case studies which have to be considered when you are going for uh, understanding lithium ion behavior okay so one way in order to uh, understand how cell behavior is or like how we can predict or estimate the cell behavior is by going through what is called as like cell testing okay so like previously we had seen some graphs like ocv graph uh, like ter terminal voltage graphs with respect to like varying current and varying temperature so all that has been obtained through cell testing so that is one way uh, in which like you can go for like uh, uh, estimating and like predicting how the cell behavior will be okay but it has certain limitations namely that it requires a lot of time and cost of like operation and cost of testing is kind of high and uh, usually it is like highly time consuming right so like uh, uh, to a certain extent uh, like you can say that uh, yes you will get results but it will take maybe like several months uh, sometimes even years to achieve the required target right so if you want to see certain values of say uh, shelf life or cyclic aging or degradation of the cell usually that will require many months of testing so uh, usually that's not uh, always feasible it's not always possible to go about with this approach right so uh, these are some of the limitations and you cannot use this approach always as a method of concluding that this is these are the only ways in which cell will behave so usually what is done is that uh, to a certain extent some key parameters of cell is of a cell is extracted using cell testing like for example the capacity uh, at different temperatures the capacity at different c rates uh, the capacity at uh, some uh, different pressures or different humidity and different ocv curves some internal resistance values so these all will be collected and they'll be fed into a model okay so that is called as a digital twin so we'll come to that in the upcoming few slides and we'll see how uh, like uh, this is particularly used in making up the model okay so the limitation is that we can't get the complete grasp of cell behavior utilizing cell testing yes it is useful uh, as in to see like we can get some key data but we cannot go for complete understanding using this okay so uh, now we come to understanding how we can develop a model uh, using some simple analogy okay so just like how you have a mechanical system uh, like say for example a mass damper and spring that you see here so you can represent this in electrical electrical manner or an electrical equivalent analogy so you can convert mass to inductor uh, spring to capacitor and damper to resistor so these are like the equivalent material or you can say equivalent elements uh, when converting to electrical uh, electrical form and then if you take the states that is displacement and velocity so all this can be like represented in the electrical form from the mechanical form so like simple uh, simple way to represent a mechanical uh, system as an electrical system so similar to this we can also represent a uh, a simple or a single cell as an electrical system okay so inside the cell uh, can go for uh, classifying the complete uh, cell model like this or you can say the electrical cell model like this so first you start by categorizing the internal materials as ohmic resistance okay so this is nothing but your uh, instantaneous uh, voltage drop okay so instantaneous voltage drop so that is caused by your ohmic resistance then there is another category of resistance it is called as chemical reactions okay this gives this gives rise to chemical resistance then we have the total energy stored that is nothing but your chemical energy stored inside so that is represented as a capacitor and then uh, the electrodes acts as the voltage source which is nothing but your uh, open circuit voltage source okay so like this way we can uh, 
like understand uh, with help of some simple analogy how a lithium ion cell can be represented in terms of an electrical format okay so in further like slides we'll see uh, uh, bit by bit like what are the different uh, electrical circuits which can be used okay so namely as i discussed earlier we'll go and we'll try to understand like what is this uh, internal resistance or rent model then also 1rc and 2rc right so these are the two uh, three classifications of equivalent circuit model that we'll see so there are some other circuitry as well uh, i will not be going into in depth of uh, in depth into these two we'll just have an overview okay and same thing here with respect to electrochemical model we'll just have an overview we will not be going into like uh, in depth and trying to explore the equations or the models uh, it is simply not possible in one hour so uh, we will have this is the overview of what we are going to go go through okay so uh, now before we go into the modeling aspect like uh, before we choose uh, like what are all the different models we'll try to like just have a basic understanding of how uh, like we have to choose the good balance between model complexity accuracy and simulation runtime so it is always uh, it is very very important that we have to choose a good balance between this right uh, it is not correct that we choose an extremely like uh, complex model like uh, if you have a very complex model it, uh, it it's not always correct to have a extremely complex model because then what will happen is uh, your simulation runtime will be very high right and even cost of simulating and the required time to simulate all this will be very high so of course even along with complexity comes the uh, like definition of different variables that they require data uh, because uh, all this is not it's not uh, a small quantity when the mo model complexity goes on increasing uh, even your variables and your de test data everything will go on increasing right so uh, it need it shouldn't be too complex and it shouldn't be too like uh, very simple either right so like uh, very very simple as i had explained like uh, simple first order with a linear equation uh, even that is not preferred always right so there is always a sort of drawback on both sides uh, uh, so you have to always choose a model that has a good uh, sort of trade off between these three okay so when we explore the upcoming three models we'll understand like how there is a how we can choose the correct trade off or how we can choose the right balance between all this okay so uh, now coming to the very first model okay this is called as the internal resistance model okay or simply ab abbreviated as r int so uh, how exactly this model is represented it is represented using the uh, source voltage which is like nothing but a ideal source voltage connected to this resistor okay so the battery resistance is given as a simple internal resistance uh, series resistance uh, across which there is some simple voltage drop okay there is a voltage drop like this and here i will call this as vr okay so vr is nothing but voltage drop due to this resistance all right so uh, here v term v term is your terminal voltage so if you go for like uh, writing the model equations it is very simple so v terminal uh, v uh, terminal that is terminal voltage is equal to source voltage or you can also call this as open circuit voltage minus vr so this is like the simplest way in which you can model the cell the terminal voltage of the cell and uh, the remaining bit of uh, data that is from your ocv and your voltage drop across the resistance uh, this will be like uh, calculated by the model based on the input data that we feed okay so if we calculate correctly uh, using certain amount of test data uh, what is the ocv and how the curve changes then accordingly even the model will simulate it okay so uh, this way like we can give a very simple sort of model to this and as i said this is a linear model this is not going to give you any complexity there is no dynamics being represented here like uh, you won't be able to notice uh, like change in the voltage curve or anything like that using this and it's not it is not uh, uh, a de it's not a very complex model okay so uh, this is a simple one okay so if you look at the advantages it is uh, having very low simulation time okay so it's pretty simple it will take few milliseconds to run this okay only one equation 
there is no like uh, like complex equations involved here, right? But of course, the disadvantage is there is no dynamic uh, properties of the cell or of the battery. No complex parameters can be used here, right? So if you want to go on uh, uh, for like complex modeling or understanding like how a cell actually behaves in real life, then we have to increase the model fidelity. Okay, fidelity is nothing but the complexity or uh, nothing but like how uh, accurate your model is. So you have to increase the accuracy. So that is where uh, we have to go for one RC model. Okay, so here one RC model is basically where an introduction of uh, an additional resistor and capacitor is brought in. Okay, so in combination to this series resistance, we also have like parallel resistance and capacitance. Okay, so uh, like uh, by using what is called as Thevenin theorem. So Thevenin's uh, equivalent circuit principles or equivalent circuits theorem, uh, like an electrical circuit, which is actually in very complex nature has been simplified to this. Okay, so we won't be like uh, exploring that uh, right now because the like, derivations are very long and uh, like the circuitry is very complex. It cannot be... Uh, shown here. So like uh, it has been simplified from a very complex format to like a rather much more like simple format here. Okay. So which is like more usable and more like uh, uh, definable. So here uh, the prominent features are that we are having parallel resistance and parallel capacitance. So then your total terminal voltage will be so V term is equal to once again source voltage that is uh, VOCV that is uh, open circuit voltage minus uh, voltage drop across the internal resistance, which I'll abbreviate as VRI minus total voltage drop across the branch here. Okay, so I will write this as VRC. Okay, so this is the RC branch. So that's why I'm giving here as RC. So the total terminal voltage will be your uh, total voltage drop across the internal resistance and your RC branch. Right, so uh, this is how we can model this uh, particular part. And if you go for like analyzing what is the voltage drop across this, then you can use like simple uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law and uh, like loop uh, uh, KVL and uh, Kirchhoff's current law as well. Okay, KCL. So if you uh, derive this, you will get a change in voltage that is du by dt. Is equal to minus one by R C minus uh, current divided by C one. Okay, so this is abbreviated as R one C one. Okay, so like uh, just a symbolic representation. Okay, uh, it's just represented as R one C one, and this is represented as R zero. Okay, so series resistance and parallel resistance and capacitor. So this is your total voltage, uh, change of voltage uh, uh, across the RC branch, right? So these are the equations that we have to use in order to model this, right? So here, uh, some further bit of uh, analysis is required. Uh, so here, what you have to do is we have to take some test data. So all of these models are actually data driven, okay? So they require some amount of basic data in order to like go for complete uh, analysis. So like what, what actually has to be done is that we go for something called as pulse power characterization. So like it's a big, basically a series of pulses uh, that have to be provided. So for example, if this is the current line, uh, if this is like the supply current. So I'm just drawing uh, some basic pulses here, the current pulses. So like, like this, there'll be like a series of continuous pulses that will be provided. And from here, we uh, derive these parameters that is polarization resistance, capacitance and internal resistance by analyzing the voltage response to these pulses, okay? So if you provide so many such pulses, then there'll be like certain uh, behavior of the voltage as well. So we'll notice that uh, there'll be like some exponential region, some linear region, okay? So your voltage response will look something like this. So if you provide the pulse, then one voltage response will be something like this, okay? So to one pulse. 
So from this portion, we actually, we will analyze like polarization resistance, capacitance, internal resistance by looking at the dynamic regions. Okay. So here, which is the dynamic region? This is the dynamic region here. Okay. Where there is like a continuous change in voltage. Okay. So within that period, we'll try to analyze uh, how much like, uh, like what is the different values of this particular uh, circuit that is your polarization resistance and capacitance like that. Okay. So since these are all data driven, it will require some amount of data from the testing to be utilized here. Okay. So previously we saw that none of this was required in the R int model. So this uh, particular model captures this particular uh, dynamics of the cell and it is able to represent it in a, a more uh, like decent and a more uh, sort of realistic way. Okay. So, uh, the RC model is like far uh, more realistic than compared to the rent model. Okay. So here it is a simple first order model. Okay. The previously it was a linear a model. This is a first order model. Okay. Because like we are having a uh, change in voltage. So here it is considering the change in voltage. Okay. So the resistor capacitor captures the dynamics during the uh, cell, uh, cell voltage response. Okay. And even though it is uh, representing more uh, accuracy, it is still having relatively lower uh, simulation complexity. Like it's not lower than rent. It is, of course, it is higher than rent, but relatively it is like still uh, considerably it is low. Okay. So we will see actually in the upcoming few slides uh, why this is much lower. Okay. So the disadvantages is that, uh, of course, me, even though it does capture some good amount of dynamics, it won't capture the complete dynamics or it won't make uh, full realistic scenarios possible, okay? So there are certain other varying parameters that this does not capture, like for example, a change in voltage with respect to temperature uh, or even thermal influence on the resistance, all that is not captured here, okay? So it's still uh, kind of sort of uh, still minimalistic. So if you want to go uh, and analyze more advanced uh, behavior of the cell, then we have to proceed to what is called as 2RC. So it's nothing but just an extension of 1RC, Okay, so here uh, we see that the key parameters are changing here in this part, right? So uh, similar to how we saw in one RC, uh, we are now considering an additional pair of RC uh, RC uh, elements. Okay, so the purpose for this is that uh, in the same voltage response to a single pulse, we can split up the complete dynamics into different parts. Okay, so for example, let me draw that voltage curve once again. Okay, so if this is your voltage response, suppose uh, this is not uh, exactly how it looks like. So you'll see that from the test value, but it looks something like this. So for example, in the 1RC model, uh, we considered uh, this as a whole, right? Uh, we considered this entire region as the uh, dynamic region. But in case of 2RC, we are splitting this up. So for example, we can consider uh, one part of this graph, say for example, only this part as the first bit of resistance, then we can consider the next part. So this part, we can split up the, the dynamic, dynamic voltage region into like uh, multiple parts, like in two parts in this case. And then each part will correspond to uh, each resistance that we see here. Okay. So that's how we go for modeling. So in this case, if you go for writing on the final terminal voltage equation, so that is V terminal is equal to your OCV minus VR0, okay? That, uh, so as described previously, this is R0. So this will be R1 and this will be abbreviated as R2. So V across R0 minus voltage drop across RC1, that is the first RC branch, okay? So please uh, do not uh, be mistaken. It's not voltage drop across this. It is voltage drop across the entire RC branch. Okay, so that's why I'm writing as VRC1. So minus VRC2. Okay, so this is your total terminal voltage equation. And once again, all these values are data uh, data driven. So all of these values are taken from the test values. Okay, so uh, this is how we go for 2RC. And in this case, it is capturing the uh, details of the complete dynamic response into parts. So basically we're just splitting up the uh, voltage behavior into multiple parts and we're feeding this into the model, right? So uh, this is how the 2RC 
model uh, is created. This is how it is uh, basically modeled. Okay. So uh, it is like far more accurate than one RC model. Okay. You will, there will be like a good amount of change that you can see here. So like it is uh, pretty accurate in terms of like real real time representation. So actually, if you see many organizations and OEMs when they go for like battery analysis, uh, battery dynamics, uh, when you're trying to like go for uh, battery plant modeling, especially in terms of EV uh, or in energy storage applications, they they usually usually they utilize two RC model. Okay, so uh, there's very accurate. It has very good uh, balance between. Uh, all the like uh, three parameters that is runtime, complexity, and accuracy. Okay, so uh, it is much more accurate than the RINT and the one RC. Okay, so it is capturing a good amount of uh, cell dynamics uh, in this case. Okay, much more than the one RC part. Okay, so uh, while all this is uh, advantage, the disadvantage is that when you're going for uh, data analysis, which is like going for which is nothing but simplifying. Uh, or basically collecting the data for the modeling simula modeling and simulation part, like uh, a lot of time is consumed and a large amount of data is usually required for this. So that's like the kind of only drawback. Okay. So other, apart from that, like uh, the 2RC model is like very advantageous. It really does not have uh, too many dis disadvantages uh, in terms of like realistic scenarios. So usually like for our day to, uh, like our day, -to day EV applications or EV simulations, this kind of model is usually preferred, okay? So if you go for model comparison, uh, here is like just a good uh, and quick overview. So we have the model type, we have the model fidelity. Fidelity is nothing but your complexity, how complex it is. And then we have the final comments or descriptions. Okay, so here you can just take a quick look. So rent is very low fidelity. Okay, enough to give you a very basic idea. It won't give you a good idea on how uh, nonlinear characteristics can be achieved or performed. None of that. So one RC model, uh, it's good. It, it captures the a good amount of uh, dynamics uh, by considering the voltage response, but uh, not uh, always good for like highly complex scenarios. Okay, so that's where two RC is very advantageous. Okay, so most used. That is why it is most preferred over other types of models. Okay. So uh, 2RC compared to every other model is most preferred. But there is also an extension of all of this. You can go on increasing the number of RC branches and like bring it to a stage where you have like five RC mod uh, five RC branches or even up to eight or nine RC branches. Okay. At that point, the model becomes extremely complex and really it requires a good amount of uh, uh, time spent on the data analysis and, you know, uh, a large amount of lookup tables and large amount of uh, estimations. Uh, it's, which is something which uh, it's, it's, it's going to slow down the, the system and it's going to increase the uh, simulation runtime. Okay. So this is not usually preferred always. Um, usually you won't go for this for simulation. So usually, as I said, again, two hours is preferred. Okay. So this is a brief overview, a complete like comparison between like all the models. Okay, so here you can see some amount of uh, uh, dynamics that has been uh, uh, sort of simulation that has been performed on the on the two RC model versus the actual cell. So how the cell is behaving in actual simulator versus the how the cell is behaving in the model, right? So that is compared over here. So there are three different types of like uh, current. Uh, uh, profile that have been provided and its voltage response has been captured here. Okay. So in each of these situations, we can see how the cell behaves uh, compared to like realistic data. Okay. So step input, constant load, uh, dynamic load. Dynamic load is nothing but DST. It's called DST. So DST stands for dynamic stress test. And this is nothing but like, uh, it's nothing but a, uh, like a simulation of uh, real life driving conditions. So how uh, the, the cell can possibly face uh, in realistic scenarios. Okay. So this is how you can understand the behavior of the uh, 2RC model and how it compares to realistic uh, like uh, scenarios. Right. So of course, these are just uh, uh, like very sort of simple inputs. There are more complicated inputs where you can go for things like uh, drive cycle analysis. Okay. Drive cycle. Uh, so this is where usually the actual uh, uh, like behavior of the models is seen. So whether it is like uh, 
you know performing exactly as expected or is it like uh, showing any errors or what kind of errors is it showing what is the accuracy uh, all that can be tested out okay so this is one way in which we can go for something called as uh, model validation so validation is nothing but comparing this to realistic uh, data okay so uh, apart from the 1rc or 2rc models there are more advanced models that you can use so here you can see like uh, some additions to the existing model that is nothing but uh, warburg impedance and another additional capacitor over here okay so warburg impedance is uh, like uh, again nothing but capturing the complete electrochemical reactions using what is called as acir okay so previously uh, i had shown in the, in like the in the in the 1rc or 2rc i had shown that we have to perform something called as pulse power characterization right uh, but uh, in uh, like in this in this case in terms of warburg impedance model we have to go for what is called as ecir so acir is nothing but like so if you draw the current profile it will be like a series of like very small current uh, signals given in terms of ac signal okay the magnitude is very small uh, it's not a large magnitude uh, pulse like it is very small it will be something like uh, uh, 70 milliamps or even less than that so it's very tiny uh, and uh, its frequency is somewhere like between uh, 1 kilohertz to around uh, about 35 kilohertz. Okay, so it's actually a very sensitive test. Uh, and the reason for performing this kind of test is because at that low frequency, uh, it is able to capture like a, a very good amount of uh, electrochemical reactions and electrochemical behavior, uh, which can actually be then represented as a uh, electrical element. Over here, which is called as an impedance element. Okay, uh, so this is actually like a bit more complex. It requires you to understand what is called as constant phase elements (CPE). So constant phase elements, which means they retain their property throughout the uh, the complete uh, simulation time and throughout the complete analysis. So rather than having like a, a sort of varying properties, so that is somewhat not 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 exactly part of uh, today's session, uh, but this kind of element can be used. And then once again, here you're increasing the accuracy of the uh, the model, okay? In, but in realistic scenarios, nowhere this is used. This is only for your research and development purpose or for battery development, uh, cell development, uh, for complete in-depth uh, simulation or analysis, okay? So that is where your uh, impedance model or basically random circuit, that's what this is called, random circuit. That's where this is, that's where this can mostly be used. So mostly for R&D uh, purpose uh, rather than uh, a realistic situation okay so for this you require like spectroscope analysis and all where they'll go for like things like a nyquist plot uh and uh, magnitude versus impedance plots so which is like a, a bit more complex to analyze okay so in this case complexity is very high uh, and even the simulation runtime is very high okay so this is realistically it is not used uh it is more only for the theoretical aspect okay so on the bottom you can see what is called as pngv Okay, PNGV stands for Partnership for New Global uh, Vehicles, uh, New Generation of Global Vehicles. So uh, this is basically a model uh, that is used by like uh, uh, many other OEMs which are going for advanced modeling, right? So previously I told you that 2RC is being widely used, right? So some companies also go for using PNGV, which is like nothing but extension of 2RC. So you can see that the same uh, 2RC branches are retained here, except in this case, an additional series capacitor is added. Okay, so this is to further capture the dynamics during the voltage response. So once again, if I draw the voltage response, it is to capture the uh, total charge being dissipated uh, between like this this portion. Okay, the total charge or nothing but the total charge Q, right? The total charge Q uh, being uh, uh, dissipated or being like removed in this particular circumstance. Okay. So this portion also will once again add to the dynamics and then make it more accurate, okay? So in order to completely understand both these, you have to spend a good amount of time, uh, like by performing some amount of cell testing, going for analyzing the data, performing many simulations and then observing the outcomes. So that is the best way where you can understand how this model validation has uh, you know, been completed, okay? So uh, this is uh, two, other two other ways uh, in which you can go for modeling. Right. So electrochemical modeling. So that is one more way. So in this case, 
uh, instead of using electrical equations like how we used uh, ohm's law or kirchhoff's law uh, in this case uh, you have to use what is called as differential equations okay partial partial differential equations which are non linear higher order non linear partial differential equations which are like uh, like there are many variables like like uh, uh, like up to like uh, 250 to about uh, 300 variables are there right so which is what like makes this kind of approach extremely complex so this is used uh, by research uh, scholars usually when they go for like in depth battery analysis uh, especially for cell development when they're going for introducing uh, new chemistries or when they're going for like uh, understanding uh, how these cells will behave at a molecular level or at an atomic level that's where this kind of model is used okay and one unique aspect to this approach is that it is specific to each chemistry okay uh, so like previously what whatever models we saw the data can be like used for whichever chemistry you you require right but in this case modeling approach for electrochemical models this is specific to each chemistry which means like a lot of equations will change a uh, lot of data will change a lot of assumptions will change uh, even the modeling aspect and approach will change all this will be uh, individual to each chemistry so if uh, if you see the chemistry type uh, just for your knowledge there are many types so the nmc uh, lfp uh, lto so these are all like different chemistries like uh, nickel manganese cobalt uh, or lithium ferrophosphate lithium titanium oxide so, like there are different ways uh, different chemistries uh, categories in which like cells can be uh, sold in the market so like if you want to analyze one cell then you have to analyze uh, based on the chemistry okay so you divide it based on the chemistry so here the other aspect is that you are analyzing the ionic reactions okay so each ion how it is reacting and how it is participating uh, in the reactions that is electrode reactions so basically we have two reactions so if this is the electrode uh, positive electrode and this is the negative electrode so we have something called as oxidation and reduction so positive will undergo reduction and negative will undergo oxidation right so if you go for like uh, writing down the differential equations then you can model the complete reduction equation uh, uh, reaction and you can also model the oxidation reaction and together you can like simulate the complete uh, realistic performance of the cell okay so they are categorized in, uh, in three different forms so one is 1d model 2d model and 3d model so again here you can see that the degree of complexity or fidelity goes on increasing okay so here you can just see a brief overview of like how each one is uh, represented like uh, in terms of like dimensional analysis so 1d model just as a simple line the cell is represented as a one single line with two points okay so one is the cathode and one is the anode so that is one way uh, the other way is like utilizing 2d model in which you have two dimensions okay so that is like uh, the radius of the cell so if you consider the entire cell so here it becomes the radius of the cell so that is one dimension and the other one is your uh, height okay so in this in this way how much ionic concentration is uh, is there across the total height and also across the total radius that can be estimated so you can see here what are all the estimate parameters so this is like far more complex than uh, you know using equivalent circuit models and things like that okay so three dimensional is much more advanced so here it is considering the thickness of the cell it is considering the thickness of the electrode material the height the width and all of those right so it's uh, this is how now uh, even the electrochemical modeling can be done okay so it is uh, it, there is like uh, too much aspect of this so which actually cannot be represented in uh, like a short webinar it, you really have to like take a lot of time to understand this part okay so but the main aspect is that uh, after having represented all these kinetics of all these important parameters you can go for like uh, cell development so mainly this is used for cell development okay so when you're going for designing cells uh, like based on particular chemistry based on a particular requirement for a uh, whether it's for ev or for or for like backup power storage or for solar whatever it is it is like you can uh, go for this kind of analysis using uh, uh, this approach okay so 
when we come to a final comparison, we see that electrochemical models are like far ac more accurate. They represent molecular level behavior and they are modeled using differential equations, not electrical equations. Okay. But on the other hand, they are very tedious. They are difficult to deal with because they have so many variables, right? Uh, and they have many assumptions as well, which are like not easy to like uh, you know prepare these assumptions. Uh, you require a lot of first-hand knowledge for that. So prior to going for modeling, you have to go for like understanding uh, how uh, like the each and every component interacts with uh, everything else. All that has to be looked at. So many complex equations are involved, right? So which basically increases the simulation time drastically, and you also require a capable system for all this. So. Uh, this uh, is th these are the aspects of uh, electrochemical model. For equivalent circuit model, it is like far simpler. Okay, so it is simple representation using some simple el electrical components, uh, just Kirchhoff's and Ohm's law is more than enough to model all of this. Uh, so variables are also much lesser, but modeling complexity is lower. Okay, so if you want to go for like quick, efficient, and effective uh, analysis and simulation, equivalent circuit model is the way to go. Okay, especially when I showed you that 2RC and PNGV, right? These are the two most preferred models that can be used uh, when you go for EV level simulation. Okay, just you have to know how to utilize the data correctly for this and how to extract the required data, right? So this is the overview of uh, all of the existing methods. Okay, so we unfortunately cannot go in depth into all of this. It will require uh, too much time and it is also not easy to represent this in the in the stipulated uh, uh, given time. Okay, so what are all the different tools or softwares that you can use? You can use MATLAB Simulink, which is like the most commonly used here at Decibit Lab. This is exactly what we use. We use MATLAB and Simulink along with Stateflow. So here we also use Comsol. Comsol is actually one of the most advanced software that you can use uh, in order to go for electrochemical level modeling. Okay. So uh, this will help you like in understanding A to Z about the batteries like aging, uh, thermal runaway, temperature, all that can be analyzed using this. Okay, so thermal analysis, uh, aging, uh, along with like uh, what is called as uh, temperature distribution. Uh, so effect of temperature on aging, uh, like uh, active material analysis, like you can analyze how much the cathode, how much the anode is degrading, how much the electrolyte is degrading, uh, like all that you can simulate uh, in Comsol. Okay, the Comsol actually like has uh, some free webinars that you can attend. There you'll be having a good idea on like how they can uh, go for further uh, like analysis. Okay, so even Altair also uh, is a software which allows you to build one-dimensional models for the for the cells and batteries. And Scilab. Scilab is very basic. It's like a much more simpler form of Simulink. Okay. So uh, these are some of the most commonly used tools and most widely used are the first two, like MATLAB and Comsol. So like uh, you can, here you can see some Comsol uh, like, like applications, how, how exactly each battery design can be like uh, categorized in detail. Okay. So electrode models, thermal models, uh, thermal analysis, uh, temperature distribution, heat and energy, short circuit, electrical abuse, uh, all this can be modeled and understood here, yeah. So uh, with this, we end the session here. Uh, so, so thank you for attending this session.